to First Peter again. Let's all stand as we honor God's word by standing. <clears throat> First Peter, the second, the fourth, the fifth chapter. I'm sorry. First Peter, the fifth chapter, and I'm going to read the seventh verse. Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the day. We thank you for this song that our dear sisters just sang. Lord, what a great blessing it is to know that no one cares for us like Jesus. Lord, it's just a, just a great blessing to know this, to experience this, and to go through life knowing this, Lord. It's been a great, great comfort, great blessing. It's been a, just a great uh, joyful rest as we realize it. No one cares for us like Jesus. Now, Lord, go with us and go with us as we finish this message, Lord. And I pray that you'll go with us as we leave this place today. And Lord, as we leave, we just pray that it's, it's been good to be into the house of the Lord once again. And Lord, we pray whatever whatever it is that our people our people's going to do after they leave here today, Lord, I pray you'll watch over them, take care of them. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. <clears throat> All right, God does care. We got into that this morning. I'm not going to go through the introduction again, but I'm going to go right on into the meat of the message and I'm only going to review what we've already said because it's it's pertinent to what we're going to say that we keep in mind what we've already said. How much does God really care for his children? He cares enough that he knows all their names. We talked about that this morning. How much does God really care for his children? He cares enough to number the hairs of their heads, as we talked about this morning. And lastly, how much does God care for his children? He cared enough that he counts every step they take. I think some of, some of those things are actually awesome. They really are. When you realize, you know, we, I, I'd be say I'd be, wouldn't be afraid to say that 99% of, of Christianity today doesn't realize that. They don't realize that every step they take, God is, God is counting them. Every, every step they take, whichever direction they go, God's counting it. Whatever they do, God's counting those steps. And he keeps, he keeps a record of them. And the Bible says in the great white throne of judgment, that's where all the lost are going to be. I'm not saying that everybody's going to be standing before the great white throne of judgment, but the great white throne of judgment says that God is going to open the books. Now, I, I, it's hard to fathom to realize that God has got a book on every one of us. He's got a book. He's keeping that book. And someday, if, if you stand before the great white throne of judgment, it says he's going to open those books. And you're going to wonder why you're there. And when you, when you realize what the results of being there is, you know, you're, you're going to wonder, you know, um, how does God know all this? Well, how did God know all the hairs of your head? Because he numbered them. He knows every one of them. He knows what they are, and, and, and he, he cares enough about every step we take. Well, how much does God care for his children? He cares enough to write down every thought they think. Every thought they think. Now, think about that for just a minute. We don't think anyone knows our thoughts. We think that it is impossible to know anybody to know our thoughts, but God does. 
God knows every thought we think. You know, we think that our thoughts are private. You know, and I guess they are private to everyone else because if we don't tell them, then they don't know it. But let me tell you, God counts. I mean, God writes down every thought that we think. Turn with me to Malachi, the third chapter, if you would, for just a moment. To Malachi, the third chapter. And um, I want to read um, in Malachi 3 and verse 16. He says, Then they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that, that thought upon his name. God keeps a record of every time you think upon him, but he also keeps a record every time you think upon other things. You know, the, the, only, reason, the only reason this is where it is is the context to this. It leads up to that statement, the statement about those who rob God by keeping God's tithes and offerings and not thinking upon the Lord and, and what he commands. God knows. God knows when you keep them. God knows when you don't give them back to him as he has commanded you to do so. God knows when you have robbed him of his tithes and offerings. God knows, God knows every thought in your head. You know, all you think you've got are legitimate reason. You know, I've got to pay a bill this week, or I've got to do this, or I've got to do that. And so you just, you just think those thoughts, and you think, well, that's okay. God will okay that. You know, I got there for a long time, a few years back. Every time somebody would, would, would tell me they're going to do something, I would say, well, it's, if it's all right with the Lord, it's all right with me. And, uh, but that didn't go over too well in some cases. If it's, all, if it's all right with God, it's all right with me. But I want to tell you, folks, every thought you think God is, is recording it. He, he's, not, he's not only recording part of it, he's recording all of your thoughts. He's recording everything, and when you speak well of him, he records those too. When you speak bad of him, he records those too. When you speak well of his son, he records those too. If you speak bad of his son, he records those too. If you speak bad of his creation, he records those. If you speak well of his creation, he records those too. So what, whatever, whatever your thoughts may be, God is recording those thoughts. Well, God writes down all those thoughts. God knows when we think about him and, and when we don't, for he writes down our thoughts. God knows who fears him and who doesn't. That's the that's key to it right there. You know, well, what does he say here? He says, then they that feared the Lord... They that feared the Lord, that is, in their, in their minds, they that feared the Lord spoke often to one another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. You know, wh whether you speak your thoughts out or whether you keep them to yourself, God is recording them. Whatever it is, he's recording all of those. And he says, in, in a book... He, he heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. So it'd do you good to think upon God's name. Because God's recording that. You talk about, you say, I want blessings. Well, I'm going to tell you, folks, if you think upon God's name, God will, God will send you blessings. But if you think that God can't, God just can't do this. I've heard people say, I would pray but God can't do that. Don't ever say God can't do anything. Because there, there, there is nothing that God, it's like somebody said to me one time, says, don't you think that God could have saved someone that was written in the Bible that he wasn't going to save? Sure, God could have, but he chose not to. God, God, was, God was limited by his own sovereignty. In other words, God's own sovereignty said that he's not going to save so-and-so. And, and so he's limited to that. Yes, 
He could save everybody. God could speak one word, and every human that's ever lived upon the face of the earth could be saved. But God chose by his own sovereignty who he was going to save, and, and God is limited to his own sovereignty. But yet we think we're not. God is limited to his own sovereignty. That's the reason, that's the reason God, uh, it, it, everyone that thinks upon his name, it's recorded also because God is limited to his own sovereignty. And so what, whatever we may think about God, there, there, are, there are some things that God won't do, not that he can't. There are some things that God won't do. God won't go against his own sovereignty. God won't go against his own, his own makings. He won't go against his own creation. He won't go against anything. God won't go against it. He just won't do it because, because he did it. Even, even, though, even though some of the things that God made that he said is good, they didn't turn out very well that way. They didn't turn out very well that way, but that was man's doings that caused them not to turn out the way they did. And so God, God is not going to speak against anything. God knows, in other words, God knows whether, uh, and I'll use this phrase, God knows whether you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake, because God knows. Not Santa Claus. God knows. God knows when you've talked well of him, but he knows also when you haven't. And so that's, that's key, that's something, that's something to think about. Now, how much, how much does God know? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, how much does God care for his children? And here it is. He cares enough to bottle up the tears of their eyes. Now, you ever think about that? You ever, think, you ever think that God is keeping a bottle of your tears? When's the last time you cried over your sins? I don't think too many people have. Certainly there, there's nobody coming down this aisle crying over their tear, their sins. But yet they're going out and committing them, yet they're doing it, they're doing it in bundles. Yet, yet, yet they're doing it in gangs. They're going out and they're doing things they shouldn't do. They say, I want to go do this. Yo, won't y'all come on go with us? Oh, yeah, we'll go with you. And they do it in bundles. They, they, they do it, they do it in, in lots. But yet, when was the last time you cried over your sins? Well, God bottled that up. God bottles that up. When was the last time you cried over a lost soul? God bottles that up. When was the last time, when was the last time you cried over a, a, a lost loved one? Well, God bottles that up. He bottles up all your tears. And I will tell you, if, if he bottled up every tear that I cried when my mother got a hold of me, he's got several bottles. Because early in my life, you know, I would cry to keep my mother from whipping me but God bottles up all of our tears look at Psalms 56 if you would turn over with me to the book of Psalms if you would Psalms 56 and I want to read to you I think this will be the last time you'll have to turn to anywhere Psalms 56 and let me read verse 8 to you he says, Thou tell us my wanderings. Now listen to this. Listen to all this. Thou tell us my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? You know. When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. You know, when your enemies attack you, God's got a bottle of tears to hand them and to say, yes, this is one of my children. They've cried over me. They've cried over their sins. They've cried over things that, that, that they, they should cry over. 
A lot of things we should cry over, we don't, but a lot of things we cry over, we shouldn't. You know, you ever see, you ever see a child throw a fit because they didn't get what they wanted? I was in, I was in a Winn-Dixie store one time when it used to be Winn-Dixie here. And this little old boy was down in the middle of the floor, just beating the floor. Mama! 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 And I just walked by and all I said was, you know, if you'd spank him, he'd quit doing that. And she gave me the awfulest look there was. You ever see that? Well, you know, does God bottle up those tears? I'm pretty sure he does. I'm pretty sure he bottles them up because someday God's going to present those tears to us. Someday he's going to show us what they are. He says in the 10th verse, In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. Now there you go. There's two usage of God and the Lord right there. What I said this morning. One, one of them is talking about Jehovah God, and the other is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. In God will I praise his word, and in the Lord will I praise his word. So let me tell you, folks, his word is what teaches us that God is bottling up our tears. How much does God care for his children? He cares enough to hold their right hand in his hand. Isaiah states, Isaiah says, For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. I will hold thy right hand. You know, how, how in the world, is that brother Ross Rain said one time, some of, I, I know Karen and Sam may remember this, but, Brother Ross Range preached a revival for us probably 30-some years ago. And, and he preached a revival for us. And he gave the example of when God seals up your salvation. And what he did was he took a quarter out of his pocket and he put it in his pocket and he called somebody up uh, from the congregation. He said, you come up here and you put your hands over mine. And he said, and he called somebody else up, and he said, now, you try to get that quarter. And they couldn't get that quarter because they had it sealed up. Well, well, I'm going to tell you, when God holds on to your hand, he doesn't let go. He never lets go. You'll say, well, man, what, 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 I just, that's, hard, that's hard to fathom. That's hard to fathom that God is holding our right hand. He doesn't say anything about he's holding your left hand or both hands. He says, I'm holding your right hand. He says, I'm holding your right hand. David declared unto the Lord, he says in Psalms 73 and verse 23, he said, nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. That's what David said. The first one was Isaiah. But this one, David. David said, Thou is holding me by my right hand. When, when's the last time that you told anybody that God was holding on to your right hand? When's the, when's the last time, you know, this past week I had an opportunity to talk to a man. He, he came over and said he wanted to talk to me. And so he said, I got a question for you. He said, I believe you can answer it. And I said, what's that? He said, uh, I've heard preachers over the years talk about the permissive will of God. He said, what does that mean? He said, I go to church every Sunday. And he says, I listen to the preacher when he preaches. But he says, always on in my mind, what does a permissive will of God mean? And I sat down and explained it to him. I had opportunity to witness to him about the doctrines of grace. I had opportunity to witness to him about all those things just by explaining to him what, what, what is the permissive will of God means. Well, this holding of your right hand is something to, to talk about. When you talk about the permissive will of God, when you talk about that, 
And you're talking about when God permits you to do something because he's got a reason for it, he's holding on to your right hand all the time you're doing it. And you say, well, what if, what, what if, I, what if something happens to me? God's not going to let that happen. Because that is his will. That is his will that you do that. You'll say, you know, the Bible says, and listen to this now. The Bible says that, that uh, every child of God is chastised. Do you, think that's a, do you think that's just a random chastisement? Or do you think that means that every child of God is chastised? And he says, if they're without chastisement, he says they're bastards and not sons. So, let's just suppose that we really do believe, and I do, but let's just suppose we, we really believe that God has a hold of our right hand. I don't know if you know it or not, but in the scriptures, the right hand is, your, is a dominant hand in the scripture. I know some people are left-handed. I've even heard some preachers preach that it's an, it's an affliction to be left-handed, but I don't believe that. I've got two left-handed uh, uh, grandchildren that I know of. I don't think any, don't think any of Shelly is left-handed. But, uh, but the thing about it is, that's not an affliction. That's the, the Bible refers to the right hand as a dominant hand. And if any hand is going to do anything, it's going to be your right hand. And so when God, when God has, when talking about the permissive will of God, when God permits you to do something, you can almost rest assured that he's got a whipping in store for you. I, I, believe, I believe the chastisement is also ordained of God. I believe all of that's ordained of God. That, I, I'm preaching to you as someone that believes in the absolute sovereignty of God. I had a man a long time ago, he came to me and he said, somebody told me you're an absolutionist. I said, depend on what you mean by that. He said, well, somebody told me that you absolutely believe that God is in control of everything. I said, well, I'm an absolutionist, if that's what that means. And I am. I always have been. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bringing anything on you that you don't know. I'm, 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 I'm an absolutionist. I believe that God is absolutely sovereign, and I believe he's absolutely predestined. I believe in absolute predestination. I believe that nothing happens that God did not preordain it. Oh, boy, that gets deep, doesn't it? Why does God hold on to your right hand? Because God is going to keep connected with you. Why? Because God cares for you. God's not going to let you get into sin that's going to get you in trouble because of him. He's not going to do it. You'll say, well, what about it when I do get into sin? Well, sometimes you're disconnected from God. Sadly. Sometimes you're just disconnected from God. You know, when people can just do whatever they want to do and don't worry about it and don't worry about what's been preached to them or taught to them, just go and do it and don't care about it. Some way, somehow... They're disconnected from God. And they're, they're going on their own. And that they will never succeed doing that. You'll never succeed doing things on your own. You, you'll never succeed. I don't care who you are. It's hard to tell some people that. Some people think success lies in them and their ability to do the things that they feel like they're able to do. But it does not. Uh, your, your ability to succeed lies in God, and God's not going to let you go very far. He's going he's to hold on to you, and he's going he's to hold on to your right hand, and he's going to keep you from some of the things that you may feel that you want to do. He's going to keep you from those things. Any of you ever wonder why you 
plan on doing something and all of a sudden you're not able to do it? I have. I, I, I paid a total of several thousand dollars for two tickets to Hawaii. Y'all remember that. Even though Brother John Pruitt gave me his part of it by being a by being Delta Airlines, but my part of it cost almost two thousand dollars. I still got those tickets. God would not let me go. He wouldn't let Ron and I go. He would not let us go. After the first time was I had problems. I had something happen in my neck, and it still still hurts me today. I had something in my neck, and I couldn't go because I was hurting so bad. Well, the second time, I got sick again. And that's when I told Rhonda, I said, Rhonda, God does not want us to go. God does not want us to go. I said, I'm not going to get to go over on them beaches and go naked. Because <laughs> God's not going to let us do it. Let me tell you, folks, I might be saying that, think I'm funny, but uh, people can't wait till they get to the beach so they can dress down. God's not, God's not going to let you go. I still got those tickets. Matter of fact, I'll sell them to anybody who wants them. That was about 20 years ago. They're no good now, but I'll sell them to you. You want them. God's not going to let you go. And lastly, how much does God care for his children? He cares enough to supply all of their needs. Now wait. Wait just a minute now. I'm responsible for all of my needs. God is going to supply all of your needs. Why? Why do you want to reject that? Why? Why do you want to reject that? Why do you want to reject the fact that somebody is, loves you enough to supply all your needs? You know, it's like Judge Judy says. Somebody will start complaining. Judge Judy said, you better hush up because you're winning. <laughs> he says, you, she said, you're really winning. You better be quiet. People still want to complain because they're winning. Why would we want to complain when God says, I will supply all your needs? The great apostle Paul told the Philippian church, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He can supply your need a lot better than I can. He can supply your need a lot better than anybody else can. He can supply all your need. Now, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a word there that's left out. That's wants. The Bible doesn't say God's going to supply all your wants. It says he'll supply all your needs. Everything you need. I told Jessica when she called and told me about the baby coming. I said, well, God's going to take care of it. God's going to take care of it. If God's not going to give Jessica and Brandon a baby that he's not going to take care of. I believe that with all of my heart. They may come and say, well, this and that, Brother Paul did. I don't care. God's going to take care of it. God's going to take care of it. I don't care what the circumstances is around it. God's going to take care of it. God is going to take care of his babies. I think I can show you that in the Bible, but I'm, I'm not going to that part of it. But God takes care of his babies. Matter of fact, David said that same statement about his, his son that passed it, that died. God is going to take care of his babies. David, David said... David said, I can't bring it back. But what did David say? But I someday can go and be with it. That's just like you here today. If you've got loved ones 
that are gone. You can't bring them back. But someday you can go and be with them. Some, someday, someday you can go and be with them. But is it, is it that fear right there that maybe you won't? Somebody told me one time, they said, they said, well, we'll never see them again. I said, well, if they're saved, you'll see them again. If they're saved and you're saved, you'll see them again. I believe that. I believe, I, I believe I'm going to, I believe that, I, I, I believe my mom and dad were saved. Because I know for a fact that the way they were before they were saved, and I know how they were after they were saved. They, they had a testimony. My dad had a testimony out of this world. But someday I'm going to go where they are. They're not going to come back to me, but I'm going to go where they are. God's going to supply all of my needs. I know that. What is my need right now? Is my need right now is none. I don't have any needs. I really don't. And Rhonda reminds me of that because I just said that. When I ask her to do something for me, she'll say, you said you don't have any needs. And she'll get out of doing it. <laughs> She's a little bit shrewder than y'all think. <laughs> yeah. Becky went like this. <laughs> Do you believe this truth? I'm asking you here today. Do you believe this truth? God will supply all of your needs. Do you believe this truth? Don't answer it. Paul wasn't talking about his own need, for he believed he believed it to be so. Somebody said one time, well, Paul was just talking about his own need. No, Paul wasn't talking about his own need. God will supply your needs, all your needs, all your need, according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Paul wasn't talking about his own need, for he believed it to be so. But now he has, he has passed the ball into our court. The ball's in our court now. Do you believe that God will supply all your needs? I preached this truth several years ago, and one said to me after service, I believe it, but. There's no buts here. Said, I believe it, but I also believe that we are responsible for our own needs. Maybe you believe that. Maybe all these things, maybe all these things you say, I believe, but you don't know my experiences. You don't know my situation. You don't know what I'm in. You don't know what I'm doing. You don't know these things. You can say those things. That's what they accused the Apostle Paul of, of saying that. But yet, only saying that for himself. Paul didn't know everybody's situation. I don't know everybody's situation. But I knew, know God said he'll supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. How, how is God capable of, of, of supplying all of our needs? He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns the hills. He owns everything that's in the hills. He owns everything that walks up on the face of the earth. And what did Paul say in 1 Corinthians? He said, whatever is Christ is also yours. Is also yours. He even says, death is yours. Some of you are going to have a need someday to die. You're going to say, how do I know? Because that's one of the needs we have. That's one of the needs that is put up on us, that we need to die. But God says, I'll supply all of your need. I'll take care of you. 
I'll make death only a shadow. I won't make it a fearful thing. I'll just make it a shadow that you're going to have to pass through. I'll take care of you. Well, I'll let you digest that statement a while. And, and all I want each of you to know today is that God does care for his own. All right, let's all stand if you would. And let's just be dismissed from this service in prayer.